So good afternoon, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Yes. All right. So I am audible. So itutuloy ko lang yung sinasabi ni Sir Ian. The PowerPoint, uh, the PDF file is at the Review Masters Premium Group. And as we mentioned in the primer, you need to answer this about 30 minutes before the class. The fresher, the better. But you can download it the night before and uh, you can answer it the night before. Pero pinakamaganda is just before the class. Para fresh na fresh sa inyo yung pagsasagot. Okay? So now, eh, uh, we are expecting quite a lot of you here right now. Titignan ko kung ilan ay nasa group. Right now, there are, wow, there are already 437 of you attending. So let's proceed. The subject today, nag, nag, ano tayo, nagdadahan-dahan tayo. Ah, wait. So I am Sir Neb. Nagpakilala na ako sa inyo. So discuss uh, off ko muna to, ang aking... Camera. All right. So here we are. A case not in dito. General science subject is for some the easiest uh, so, uh, science subject, but at the same time, in my opinion, this is probably the most difficult. Okay. Uh, so ito lang muna. If if in any instance naging choppy yung sound, you can refresh the website. Uh, or if nagkaroon ng case na dalawang audio yung narinig nyo, ganun lang din gawin nyo. I-refresh nyo lang din yung, yung site. Okay? So, in my opinion, general science is the easiest. Wala ka masyadong iisipin. Uh, it's there. But in my case, this is probably the toughest of the four sciences. We have general science, biology, chemistry, and physics. Why is it the toughest? I am poor at memorization. I am poor at retaining information, okay? But I am pretty good at uh, deriving formulas. So, dun ako nakakapag, uh, nakakapag-improve dun. So, general science is mostly, uh, for the UPCAT, for college entrance tests, this is mostly about, yes, geology. Okay? Now, yung ibang nagtasabi dito, Sir, paano po kung hindi na ituro sa akin? Paano po kung hindi na, na, na ituro nung high school ako? That's the sad thing about general science. Okay? As I mentioned in the previous workshop on last Saturday, uh, last Sunday, reviewing is like a bucket na nire-recover mo lang yung information. Unlike, but if the information was never put in, medyo may hirapan tayo. So, in this case, the questions here are uh, are mostly about earth science, and the questions here cover multiple topics. So, I ang assumption namin dito lagi is you have already answered. You've already answered the your general science exam, and then may masasagot natin dito. Uh, iyak ka mga home student. Wala ba talaga general science? Don't I think there is. Okay. Meron yan, meron yan. And uh, some of those, some of these things you know, you just don't recall that you know it. Kaya nga tayo review Okay? So let's proceed with our first slide. For number one, refer to the figure below. And you've seen this in our presentation. So meron tayong apat na positions. One, two, three, and four. The question is, in which position... Will a gibbous moon be visible in the Earth's night sky? B, B. All right. Actually, that's uh, this is a pretty easy question. Kaya nga inuna natin siya. Yes, the answer is letter B, position two. Kasi kung makita niyo dito, we have several positions. At position one, you will get a full moon or a new moon, uh, a full moon or an eclipse. Number two is gibbous. Number three is a half moon. And number four is a solar eclipse. Paano nangyayari yan? This is, a, this is a chart. Since the Earth is really far away from the sun, lahat ng rays ng sun is straight. Okay? A new moon is not a solar eclipse. It's, the, it's during the full moon, that's the only time you're able to get a total lunar eclipse, diba? So, we get about one lunar eclipse every year. So, makikita nyo lang dito siya during the full moon. 
Uh, right now, the moon is at its, if I'm not mistaken, it's at its first quarter moon. First quarter. So, ito yung shape niya. So, the gibbous is yung mas malaki sa half moon. This is what we call the half moon most of the time, di ba? But it's actually a quarter moon. Why is it called a quarter moon? Kasi we're only seeing just one-fourth of the moon. Okay? The crescent moon is we're familiar with uh, ito yung shape ng banana. The gibbous moon is ito yung mas malaki ng konti sa half moon. Na tinatawag natin. So, the technical term is a quarter moon. But the common term is a quarter. So first quarter moon, third quarter moon, and this is the full moon. All right? So let, I was starting simple. Let's go to number two. The blank theory of the universe that never changes while the blank theory states that the universe has a beginning and an end. The blank theory states that the universe never changes while the blank theory states that the universe has a beginning and an end. This is, the answer here is letter B, tama kay lahat. It's the steady state and the Big Bang Theory. Okay? What are the differences of those two? The steady state. The universe does not change in appearance over time. The universe has no beginning or end. This theory has been proven to be obsolete. Okay? Actually, the steady state theory has two theories. Papakita ko sa inyo yung image mamaya. Hindi na ngayon tinatanggap ang steady state theory. Everyone is now, uh, almost all scientists are now in agreement that the steady state uh, theory no longer exists. The answer here is the Big Bang Theory. This is the current theory. The universe began as a high density point and then it expanded. Now, if you consider the Big Bang, the Big Bang is 13.77, the universe is 13.77 billion years old. Okay? The Bang. Ang assumption ng iba is, kaya sa tinatawag na Big Bang, from a point that is less than the size of an atom, it expanded during the inflation stage. And in this stage, it's just about one second. After a singularity, yes, in just one second, it expanded to about 80% the current size of the universe. Okay? And right now, the universe is still expanding. Kaya siya tinatawag na Big Bang Theory. There's a very big bang at the start of the universe during the uh, singularity, then the inflation stage. And right now, the universe is still expanding. The, its difference from the steady state theory, the law of theory in steady state. One theory of steady state is the universe is constant, but there's also another theory of the steady state that the universe is expanding, but matter is constantly created. Okay? The current assumed uh, correct theory is the Big Bang theory. Matter dilutes. So, kumbaga, the amount of matter in the universe is constant, but the universe is expanding. Okay? Anytime you have a question, type it here. Minsan, paminsan, minsan, sisilipin ko tong Q&A portion. Pero, Nahihirapan kasi akong silipin. Uh, what is the nebular theory? There's no such thing. Okay? The nebular theory, uh, it was put in as a distraction. So may choices tayo dito. Steady state, nebular, tidal, tidal, nebular. It, it doesn't affect the, uh, the expansion theory of the universe. It's just there para panggulo na choices. So it's really about the steady state theory at Big Bang Theory. Okay? Next question. Marami naman tayong discussions dito. So you can ask anytime. Kita ko naman kung lumalabas. But uh, I would request though, I know there is a Q&A portion here. And it's also okay. But I would prefer na dito niyo sa chat i-type. Yes. Tama kayo. Sorry. The nebular theory is within the galaxy. But the question was about the steady state and the Big Bang. This is for the entire universe. Now, the presence of blank in the atmosphere prevents rapid temperature fluctuations. Yan, ang ganda ng debate dito. A or B, A or B. Okay? You've heard of greenhouse. Diba? The greenhouse effect. Diba narinigin na greenhouse effect? Is greenhouse effect good or bad? 
Okay lang, kahit mag-send kayo ng answer dyan, at least na ano tayo. Uh, my question right now is, greenhouse is greenhouse effect good or bad? Good, bad, good, bad. Okay. Ito yan. Greenhouse effect is the only reason we are able to survive on Earth. The answer for this item is letter A. Okay? Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. It's a very powerful greenhouse gas. Another powerful greenhouse gas is methane. Wala siya sa choices. Okay? So, it's because of the greenhouse effect that we're able to survive on Earth. First, it shields against space radiation, mostly and to... Uh, Atmosphere composition natin. The CO2, in uh, CO2 is responsible for photosynthesis and temperature regulation. Paano, how does uh, CO2 regulate temperature? It's like this. During the day, the sun hits the earth. Diba? It enters the atmosphere. Then, what happens is it dilutes that amount of heat entering the atmosphere and then it spreads it throughout the atmosphere. As during the night, the long wavelengths are also inside. So greenhouse effect is actually good for us. If there is no atmosphere, if there's no carbon dioxide in the air, the mornings will be hotter than it's, used, it's supposed that it is now, and the evenings will be so much colder. The problem is the balance. Ang nangyari, for example, sa, sa Venus, napakaraming greenhouse gases sa kanya. Okay, so ang nangyari, the Venus is actually the hottest planet in our uh, solar system. Mercury is not the hottest. In the morning, yung araw nakatutok sa Mercury, pero at the other side of Mercury, it's freezing. Okay, so the, the right balance of greenhouse gases makes it survivable, makes Earth livable. And in fact... This is, yes, too much, CO, uh, too much CO2 and methane in Venus, actually. The process that they are uh, thinking of para to make Mars colonizable is to put in plenty of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Mars para uminit ng kote Mars. Okay, why is Venus hotter than Mercury? It's because when the sun, the energy from the sun hits Venus, it doesn't escape. As compared to Mercury, when it hits it, everything just escapes again. Kasi walang atmosphere. There's no atmosphere in Mercury. Okay, so anong nangyayari sa Venus, naiipon lang na naiipon lahat ng uh, energy ng sun within its atmosphere. Okay? Okay, now na. na. So greenhouse is greenhouse effect good or bad? It's good to a certain extent. Too much greenhouse effect, it will be too hot. Next. During the blank, the sun illuminates the northern and southern hemisphere equally. Which one is this one? During the blank, the sun illuminates the northern and southern hemispheres equally. So here is the clue. Actually, part of this, uh, this is part of the 30, uh, 37 tips and part of testmanship. You see the word equally. Diba? Meaning equal daw dapat. Among the choices, equinox is the only answer that, uh, that has equality in it. Solstice is actually the summer solstice is the longest day, winter solstice is the longest night. Autumnal equinox and spring equinox has equal night and day. So the answer for this one is letter A. Okay? Now, kung September 22, may papakita lang ako sa inyo. So although we're discussing about equinox, mayroon kasi talang dalawa, solstice and equinox. Because of the tilt of the sun, May, meron tayo ngayong seasons. In the temperate regions, we have some as winter, spring, summer, to fall. Diba? In our region, since we are in the equator, we only have the rainy season and the dry season. We actually don't have summer here. Okay? Summer, so, summer solstice, the sun illuminates the northern hemisphere more, while the winter solstice, the sun illuminates the southern hemisphere more. 
Ano yung March 21 or September 23? Yes. That is the equinox. It's not a fixed day. It's approximately uh, March 20, 21, or 22, and approximately September 21, 22, or 23. Nagbabago siya every year kasi depende yun sa calendars natin. Diba? Okay? Equinox naman is equal. So, dalawa. You have the spring equinox and the autumnal equinox. Now, you look at this, it's either 22 or 23, or March 21, 20 or 21. Bakit may changes ng konti? Bakit hindi siya specific? Always remember, we have leap years. Diba? It's because of that leap year kung bakit hindi siya perfectly in tangent. But that is uh, practically every year, September 22 and 23, March 21 and 22. In fact... Now, you've heard of the Stonehenge, di ba? Okay? For this year, the Stonehenge, this is the Summer Solstice Festival. Kinreate talaga yung Stonehenge that when you look at it, the sun will rise at that uh, stone. Okay? So, it will start at June 18 and will end at June 22. So, for four days, makikita mo talaga na tumatapat yung araw dito. Someone is requesting, and I think I know why. Okay, well, if you want to take note of the dates, these are the dates. So summer solstice is June 20 to 22. Winter solstice is December 21 to 22. Okay? And equinox naman is September and March. Basically, on the 20th siya ginagawa. Okay? So, for this year, for the first time ever, yung mga interesado makita to, Starting June 18 up to June 22, they will be streaming the Stonehenge sunrise. So every time na magkakaroon ng sunrise sa Stonehenge, pwede nyo siyang uh, panorin, nakastream, nakastream siya live starting June 18 until June 22. Kasi bawal pumunta ngayon sa Stonehenge. So what they did was they set up a camera, tapos i-stream nila live yung Stonehenge na to. So makikita nyo talaga yung sunrise na tatapat dito sa uh, na to. Okay? So if you're interested, June 18. Starting June 18 until June 22, it will be streamed live. Search nyo na lang. Number five. Which of the following statements is true about, uh, statements about minerals is true? Ah, sige. Balikan ko muna yung question. Anong cost ng leap year, sir? We'll go back to number five, but I'll just explain ko anong cost ng leap year. Pakita ko tong calendar na to. Kasi it's also a nice question. What is the cause of a leap year? We are familiar, we, are, we know that the, uh, the earth revolves around the sun. Diba? And it, it is 365 days. But not exactly. If, for example, this is your original point at December 21, if you count only 365 days, Kulang siya ng konti. It doesn't return to original position. Yes, because it's 365 and one fourth days. Okay? So you need to add an extra day every four years para mag realign itong mga dates na to. And actually, our marker is always the solstice. Alam natin na if you don't put a leap year, Lalayo ng lalayo ang date ng winter solstice natin. So it's only we put in a leap year so that our calendar is always perfect along with the solstice. Okay? So let's go back to number five. Sorry, na nandito. Which of the following statements is true? The answer here is letter D. The streak is determined by rubbing on a rough surface. Now, A mineral, you can identify a mineral by several uh, several points. Okay? It's their color, their hardness, and their streak. So some of the common properties, and yung itatanong sa inyo kapag minerals na tinatanong, are the following. Okay? So physical characteristics of minerals, ito yung yan. External crystal form, cleavage, fracture, luster, color, streak, transparency, structural hardness, and specific gravity. But in the case of the upkat, ano ang mga importante yung maaalala nyo? 
it's usually about cleavage, fracture, ano difference ng cleavage and fracture, ano difference ng streak and color, ano ang hardness, and ano ang structure. So when you look about uh, look at the upcut, you actually only need to remember a few things. Cleavage, streak, and hardness. Okay? So in terms of minerals, in terms of the upcut or any college exams, it's about cleavage, streak, and hardness. If you remember those three, lusot na kayo sa mineral types. Bakit? This is the cleavage. A cleavage is dependent on the, its uh, crystalline structure. So cleavage in one direction, cleavage in two directions, three directions. Uh, bakit yun lang po? It's not so much as it's the only thing that you need to remember, but it's the the it's rightly the points na may tatanong sa upkat. So, ano ang ibig sabihin ko nito? Okay? These are the physical characteristics of minerals. If you remember cleavage, you'll also understand the external crystal form. You'll also understand the fracture. If you remember streak, you'll also understand color. If you remember hardness, you'll also understand the structure. So, kung dadamihan nyo masyado, ang alam niyo, ma-overload kayo. So, in minerals, I only uh, uh, you only need to remember cleavage, streak, and hardness. When you remember those three, maaalala nyo na yung ibang mga points. Okay? So, cleavage is based on its uh, on its crystalline structure. The cleavage of a mineral is where it will break. So, if you cut a crystal, it will cut in one direction for muscovite. It will cut in two possible directions for feldspar. It could cut in several directions for halite. So, ang cleavage is where you cut it. It's not where it breaks down. Sir, pwede po pa-define ang cleavage? Teka lang ha, hanapin ko sa ano. I actually opted not to put this in. The cleavage of a rock is, is it's not its weakest point. It is the plane where a rock will break. Okay? So, kung meron kang single direction, one direction for example, you will always break the, rock, the mineral in one, one point. Okay? Proceed tayo. So, tandaan nyo ha, cleavage, cut streak, and hardness. Remember only those three, makukuha nyo na siya. It's the point where it will break. Next, hardness. Bakit importante itong hardness? Ang sabi po sa amin, hindi raw po reliable. Yes, hindi reliable ng Wikipedia, but it is reliable enough. Okay? For most part, it's okay. But not so much na doon ka magre-rely ng research mo. Okay, hardness naman, it's how hard a mineral is. And the hardness is stated in the Moss scale, and you have 1 to 10, and the combined element... The, the sorry the representative mineral are the following what do you need to remember if you can remember all of this it, and there's actually a song sir ian remembers that song i i cannot remember it okay but the only thing you really need to remember for an exam is the first three and the last three hindi mo na kailangan yung gitna talc is the softest diamond is the hardest most of the time ang itatanong sa inyo is the second one which one is the second hardest and which one is the second? Second hardest is corundum. Second softest is gypsum. Okay? And then, magsasabi lang dito, for example, uh, which of the following elements can your fingernail cut? Your finger, fingernail is harder than gypsum. So, nandito yung mga points niya. Okay? So, only remember, talc and gypsum are the softest, corundum and diamond as the hardest. Unfortunately talaga, sa gen side, it's things you need to remember. Graphene is actually harder than diamond. Okay? So for those who know, graphene can be harder than diamond. However, that question will not be asked in the upcut. It's some, you can file those things as things that are nice to know, but really has little function for you when taking an exam. 
Talc yung ginagamit sa pulbo. Yes. Kaya nga talcum powder and sa chalk. Okay? So, the only thing you need to remember, sorry, is talc and gypsum are the softest, corundum and diamond are the hardest. And that's it. Streak. Not affected by impurities. More consistent and more reliable than color. For example, this is, uh, I think this is copper. No, no, this is not copper. Red kasi siya. Uh, nakalimutan ko ng streak. But what happens in streak is this. When you uh, rub a mineral in porcelain, magkakaroon siya ng color na lalabas. Okay? And the purpose of that is you'll be able to have more colors in a single mineral. Pabalik po ulit. Dito. Or dito. Not affected by impurities. Okay? It's the reason why, although this is gold, meron tayong tinatawag na yellow gold, may tinatawag tayong rose gold, may tinatawag tayong white gold. Meron din tayong tinatawag na green gold. Napakarami yan. May red gold pa rin. The reason is, it, it, uh, it will have several different colors, but if you streak it, Kailangan ba porcelain? Yeah, uh, yes, it has to be porcelain. Uh, kasi porcelain, it's white. You can streak it anywhere, pero hindi mo siya makikita. If you streak it in porcelain, you'll see the real color. If you streak the yellow gold, the rose gold, and white gold in porcelain, it will always be gold. Yung makikita mo, yung yellow. Diba? Even if it's green gold and you streak it, you will see uh, yellow gold there. But when you look at it, Externally, you'll see different colors. So that's why, what's the difference between color and streak? Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, mas tandaan yung streak. The streak will always be the same. Whatever the color of the mineral, kaya may tinatawag silang fool's gold, di ba? Fool's gold is iron. When you look at it, it looks like uh, it looks like gold. But when you streak it, it's going to be black because the streak of iron is black. All right? Kaya ang dami mga nagsasabi ngayon, ano bang magandang gold? Yellow gold, rose gold, white gold, red gold, green gold. Ang sagot lang namin yan, pare-pareho lang gold yan. Is porcelain and streak plate the same? Yes. Actually, streak plates are made of porcelain. Okay? I'll proceed with the next slide. So that's it for minerals. So when you remember, uh, think about minerals, you only need to remember three things. Hardness, streak, and cleavage. If you remember those three, mas madali mo nang maaalala yung ibang mga factors. And it's about retaining information in your head. Okay? Which of the following modern continents separated from Gondwana? Sama-sama kayo lahat. Letter A. What is Gondwana? Parang Africa ng Gondwana. Okay, magaganda yung mga sagot nyo. It's actually quite logical. It's Africa. Wakanda, ha? There are several uh, supercontinents, okay? The first supercontinent that you've all been taught since you were elementary is, ano, Pangea. Diba? There was, there's actually a supercontinent before Pangea, pero hindi nyo na, hindi nyo na kailangan. Uh, you can classify it as things you want, it's nice to know, or uh, kung kayo ay mag-geology in the future, you'll find out that there's actually a supercontinent through din niya. But for the exam, you only need to remember Pangea. And Pangea is, part, is two supercontinents. Ano yung two supercontinents na yon? Laurasia and Gondwana. Ito yung madaling clue. Laurasia is north, Pangea is south. Ay, sorry, Laurasia is north, Gondwana is south. So, tingnan nyo yung choices. Among the choices, alin dito, ang sabi ko dito is Gondwana, di ba? So, which one is north? Asia, Europe, and North America is all north. This is Laurasia. Ano yung south? Africa, South America, India, Antarctica, Australia, those are all part of Gondwana. 
Okay? So it's Laurasia and Gondwana. Gondwana land is okay na rin Gondwana land. Gondwana is the uh, is the shortened term. So our the largest supercontinent that is important for you is Pangaea. You don't need to know uh, Rodinia. Kung makakalimutan niyo yung Rodinia from now on, okay lang yan. Hindi niyo na siya may encounter ulit. But after Pangaea, it's split into two, Laurasia and Gondwana. Laurasia is north, Gondwana is south. Ganun na lang kasimple yun. Okay? So everything south is Gondwana, everything north is Laurasia. Alright? So bakit sila nag-travel? It's the plate tectonic theory and the continental drift theory. So it's a combination. Actually, the prevailing theory is the, con uh, the plate tectonic plate theory, but it also supports the continental drift theory. Okay. And with, along with plates, this is the question. The African Rift Valley is formed by black, in a blank plate boundary. Alfred Wagner is on the continental drift. That's true. Okay. Or this one. Correct. Most of you are correct. The answer here is tension and divergent. This is the East African Rift. They have predicted that Africa will split into half a million years from now. So, alam nila na naghihiwa-hiwalay talaga yung uh, naghihiwalay ang Africa. How does it work? Makikita nyo dito, Africa is actually being split in half. This is the East African Rift. Basta may term na Rift Valley, it means it's separating. Okay? So divergent boundaries, plates separate from each other, and pag naghihiwalay sila, there will always be tension. So pag naghihilahan kayo ng magkaibigan kayo, that's tension. Pag nagtutulahan kayo, that is com uh, compression. Kapag Puba Valley, matik po na divergent, it's not automatic. Kapag Rift Valley, yes. Okay? So, hindi naman kayo tatanungin masyado ng iba pang type ng valleys. Kasi, uh, on the, on, if it's a question of plates, a valley will be, uh, a valley will be about divergent. Pahingi na pagkain, pasensya na, nag-crackers ako, ako'y gutom na gutom na talaga. Okay? Basta nag-ihiwalay, it's divergent. And the valley is a clue for being divergent. If San Andreas Fault is not a valley, papakita ko siyan. Nandito na yung question dito. Next. So other divergent boundaries are sea floor spreading, oceanic ridge, rift valley, and ocean formation. Okay? So this is an example of divergent plates. So sa Africa, you have a rift valley. Underwater, you will have you also have a rift valley, but it's also called a ridge. Okay? Ano naman ngayon yung convergent plates? Convergent boundaries naman are compression. So what are some examples of convergent plates? You have a trench and you have mountains. Pag meron kang convergent plates, the tendency here is to have mountains. So kung continental to continental, there will be mountains. If it's continental to oceanic, there will be trenches. Okay? So ano naman, ay, sorry, wrong spelling. Nag-swap nag yung H at N. What, ano naman transform valleys? Ang transform, valley, uh, transform boundaries naman are the one that moves from side to side. And this is the San Andreas Fault. Okay, the San Andreas Fault is an example of a rift, uh, a transform plate boundary. When it moves, it moves from side to side. And makikita mo dito, this is a cornfield. And after an earthquake, gumalaw yung ano niya. Uh, gumalaw yung kanyang lupa. Volcanoes are caused by convergent plates. Makikita ko dito, okay? Not all volcanoes. Okay, I'll have to be specific about this. Most of our volcanoes are caused by convergent plates because when the lithosphere goes down, it melts. Tapos may tumataas, ito yung naging volcano. There is a type of volcano na hindi dahil sa plate. It's, may, may, may explain ko mamaya, it's in Hawaii. The shield volcanoes are not because there is a convergent boundary. 
But most of the volcanoes are created by convergent boundaries. In Iceland, there's a different type of, no, that's a divergent boundary naman. It opens, okay? So, you will have volcanoes at boundaries, either divergent or convergent, but there is a special type of volcano, which are shield volcanoes, tama kayo, na makikita nyo sa hotspots. Mamaya, pupunta tayo dan. Now, this is actually a question that is very hard to remember, lalo na yung mga tawag sa kanya, but at least, when I teach you this, there are some things that you have to be able to recall. Which of the following rock structures occur during very slow cooling of magma, leading to formation of very large crystals? I know a lot of you will guess this one. And it's okay. Okay? Ito yung question talaga na nakakainis to. Either you were taught this or you weren't taught this. Pag nangyari dito, you have to start guessing. However, some clues can be derived. What can be derived? When it's fast cooling, there will be no crystals. So it was, it's going to be glassy. So at least na-cancel mo na yung letter B. You'll be able to choose between A, C, or D. Alin nga yung dito yung clue? Ang problem dito is if you don't know, if, if it was never taught to you, then you can never really guess. You can never really uh, extract it. You'll have to guess. But now I'm going to teach you a few things. The answer is letter C. Pegmatitic. Ano muna to? So igneous rock textures is caused by uh, magma cooling. Diba? If it's underground, it's plutonism. If it's above surface, it's volcanism. So it will always be, igneous rocks will always be from magma na magiging matigas. I know you were guessing, but here is the information that you really know. When it's fast cooling, it's apanitic, or crystals are visible to the unaided eye, and glassy, there are no crystals. If it's quick cooling, fast cooling, the samples would be obsidian. This is glassy, okay? So if it's fast cooling, the crystals are really small. Kaya mo siya makita, pero it's very small, or to the point of being glassy na siya. Alright? Next, if it's slow cooling, you'll have crystals that are visible to the unaided eye. And pegmatitic are massive crystals. Malalaki na talaga crystals. It cooled down so slowly. And you will get, this is granite, kung makikita mo, the crystals are now visible. Okay? Or, ito yung pegmatitic, yung sobrang laki na talaga ng crystals. Sorry, the fast cooling... Balik tayo dito. Fast cooling is basalt and rhyolite. So not visible to the unaided eye. So kung sisilipin mo, hindi mo siya makita. Okay? You need a microscope to see the crystals. Slow cooling. Slow cooling ang granite. Okay? And the pegmatite or pegmatitic is massive talaga yung crystal. So this is an example of, wait, I think this is gabbro. So visible yung crystal sa kanya but it's still small enough. Okay? But this is a pegmatite, uh, pegmatite. The crystals are so big. Kitang-kita mo na siya. There's a third kind. Di ba? Pwede siyang slow cooling. Pwede siyang fast cooling. The third type is slow cooling, tas biglang bumilis. When, you, when that happens, the mixed cooling niya, starts with so, slow cooling and then changes condition. So, if you have mixed conditions, you will have large crystals and small crystals together. Okay? Pasok matay ngayon sa shield volcano. Nasagot na. Hawaii has blank volcanoes which are low altitude volcanoes with la, 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 wide bases. You've already answered this one. This is a shield volcano. Okay? So this is an example of volcanoes. We have three types, composite cones or stratovolcanoes, shield cones, or cinder cones. What is taal? Gumagana talaga ang power of C? No. Power of C doesn't work. 
But for now, nakatsamba ang power of C. So my question here is, dito, the answer here is letter C. But my question now is, what is taal? Strata volcano. High, steep sides, explosive eruptions, releases viscous magma, sample is Mayon and Fuji. These are strata volcanoes. Taal is actually a strata volcano. Majority of volcanoes here are uh, strata volcano. Shield cones, wide base, gentle slopes, quiet eruptions. Sample is Kilauea and Mauna Loa. These are Hawaiian volcanoes. This volcano erupts so softly na pwede kang mag may mga scientists na naglalakad sa tabi lang ng lava. Okay? Cinder cone. Steep side, narrow base. Taller than shield cones but lower than strata volcanoes. Explosive eruption, release fragmented materials. And for example, this is the Paracutin volcano in Mexico. Taal is a strata volcano. Pero kung titingin mo, para siyang, ano, para siyang cinder, no? But most of the volcanoes in the Philippines are strata volcanoes. Cinder cones ay bihira siya lumabas. Okay? This is a very explosive type of volcano. Right? Number 10. Uh, we are just about in time. Number 10. P waves are blank waves and are the blank body waves. A, compressional fastest, compressional slowest. So, yan ang lindol. Tatandaan nyo na lang, okay? P and S waves are body waves. And you have the Love and Riley waves as the surface waves. Now, the question here is, is it fast or slow? Is it compressional or transverse? Let's see. Answer is letter A. They are compressional waves and they are the fastest. Kaya nga siya primary. P are primary waves. So, seismic waves, it originates from the point of uh, eruption, a uh, point of the earthquake. They lose energy as they travel. If they hit the surface, it's called the epicenter. Diba? So, body waves are underground. It, uh, it travels around the earth. And the surface waves naman, it travels at the surface. We only feel surface waves. We can never feel body waves. But there are seismometers planted underground that are able to read the body waves. Okay? So, let's proceed. In an earthquake, ang nangyayari kasi is, di ba, it's very, uh, imagine something that is so tightly packed. The friction is almost uh, unbearable. And then biglang nag-slide. It's at that slide na nagkakaroon ng focus. And at the focus, the body waves will start moving forward. Okay? And then, at the top, magkakaroon ka ngayon ng uh, surface waves. So what are uh, P waves and S waves? The P waves are the fastest and compressional waves. It passes through solid rock or magma. The S waves are transverse waves and cannot travel to molten rock. This is actually the re uh, how they were able to determine that the outer core is, is molten. They studied the S waves that travel to the core. Then the surface waves naman, you have two. You have the love wave and the Riley wave. So L and R ang surface natin. Uh, magandang clue yan, uh, uh, Bobby. P for the fastest wave. Kung pwede na. Okay. 
okay so if you look at this the p waves move by compression so kung imagine mo meron kang spring tinutulak mo siya back and forth that is the p waves ko i move mo lang up and down ang spring and that will be similar to the s waves now the surface waves naman is the what you feel at the surface you have the love wave and the riley wave Medyo, ano siya? So, the P waves is compression. S waves is transverse, up and down siya. So, para siya nagsishake sa loob. And then, the love wave is at the surface na nagsishake from left to right. And the Rayleigh wave is yung rolling. Ito yung nararamdaman nyo na pag lumilin doon is parang kayo tinutulak taas baba. Okay? And this is actually all you need to know about earthquake waves. Magandang ano yan, Sir Alan. Yes, P as in push and push. Tama. Magandang analogy yan. P waves are waves that push. Okay, number 11. What's your answer? Actually, this item is heavily clued, di ba? Automatic to. Coal generates greenhouse gas. Oil generates greenhouse gas. Geothermal doesn't generate greenhouse gas. Or doesn't it? Okay? Actually, geothermal energy has some greenhouse gas. But it's insig insignificant. How can it have greenhouse gas? I'll just explain. Geothermal energy uses the heat from the earth. It moves steam. So yung steam papasok sa yung water, ipupump nila pa baba, and then the, the, steam, the water is heated into steam. Lahat naman ng uh, nangyayari is you're simply moving a large motor, a large generator. So there are some, there are some greenhouse gases released in geothermal energy, but it's very, very minimal. Here is what happens. So you have an injection well. So they dig deep at the uh, crust of the earth near volcanoes. Bakit malapit sa volcano? It's because near volcanoes, medyo mainit na yung lupa. Okay? They now pump water. They inject water down. And that water is heated. Then in the production well, aangat na yung steam na to. Okay? That movement of steam makes a motor turn, a generator, and, and that exceed, uh, exhibits electricity. However, bakit, how can it release some greenhouse gases? Some of those steam cannot be put back in. Okay? All motors right now still use a steam engine. Kahit ang nuclear power, they still use steam engines. So this is how it works. You inject water, it boils, it becomes superheated, it moves up, at this point it's still liquid, and then mag-steam mag steam siya dito sa taas, and that steam is enough to turn the generator. Okay? The problem with uh, geothermal energy is it's very expensive to set up. But it's also one of the cleanest sources of energy. Uh, I'm very fortunate that in high school ako and college, in college ako, I was able to go inside a uh, geothermal power plant, and I have friends who work at the geothermal power plants now. Pero talaga siya, literally, there's a large <coughs> there's a large machine that's being turned by steam. Okay, so it is na ko, it does release some greenhouse gas, but it's very minimal. Do we use geothermal energy in the Philippines? Yes, we do. Uh, one of the largest plants is here in Laguna, the Kalaya, uh, Kalayaan Power Plant, the Makban Power Plant. Mainit po pa sa loob, mainit sa paligid. It's really steaming hot sa paligid. 
What are the disadvantages of geothermal power plants? The main disadvantage of the thermal power plants is it's very expensive to set up. Yes, in even Tiwen Albay, meron din yan. Uh, I'm just fortunate because I'm here at Mount Makiling. There's a geothermal power plant here. Sabi pa ba? Yeah, sabi na nga yan. Alright? So, that's really just the main advantage. It's very expensive to set up. Then once you set it up, it just generates power. Non-stop. Alright? Let's proceed. Number, so reliable, cost-effective, sustainable, environment-friendly. The disadvantage is it's limited to areas near plate boundaries. We are at, at that uh, advantage. Large initial capital to set it up. Okay? Wind turbines is one of the, no? Teka lang ha. Sir, bakit po nagmumura kuryente sa nuclear power plant? Uh, here is an example. Gusto ko sagutin yan about nuclear power. You see this? Okay? You see this generator? It's a large generator powered by steam. Diba? The advantage of a thermal uh, power plant is you have a source of steam. Your source of steam is the ground. What if your location cannot access that steam? You'll still have a generator. San manggagaling yung heat mo? Your heat will come from your nuclear energy. So nuclear energy is cheap. You can produce vast amounts of heat with nuclear cores. The problem with nuclear energy is the nuclear radiation. So bakit siya naging mura? The amount of energy that you produce is massive. Kaya yung generator mo, tatakbo lang talaga ng mabilis na mabilis. You, you produce a lot of electricity. Okay? Why, uh, why aren't we doing it here in the Philippines? That's a political question. Okay? It's not really about a technical question. It's really more of a political question. All right? Oh, wag na masyadong mag-asaran dito. Number 12. Which among the following strategies is most preferred in waste management? I want you to answer this one kasi this is really top broken. Which among the following strategies is most preferred in waste management? A, D, B, okay, B. All right. Good answers, actually. Here's the thing. Recycling is very low in waste management. In waste management, the top most is prevention. Prevent using anything that produces waste in a way. The second is minimize. If you need to use something that will become waste, minimize using it. After using it, reusing is another point. Recycling is the other. Energy recovery, kung meron ka pa recover And finally, disposal. Okay? These are the ways to recover energy. Now, how is it easily translated? So, nakalagay dito, among the choices, energy recovery is still at the bottom. Ano? Minimization ang pinakamagano sa atin. Minimize, reuse, recycle energy. Narinig nyo na itong term na to. Refu ang dating term is reduce, reuse, recycle. Okay? But, the better term is, may nauna pa dito, rethink. Kailangan ko pa talagang gamitin to. Second, refuse. Ito yung minimization. So, equivalently, refuse is prevention. Okay? Refuse and rethink is prevention. 
Minimization naman is reduce, reuse, and recycle. So, tandaan mo itong uh, five R's na to. Refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. This is equivalent. This is the easy, uh, easy mnemonic to prevention, minimization, reusing, recycling, and disposal. Right? I'm checking the Q&A. Kung may nakakalasot sa akin. Okay, before we proceed, I'd like to answer some of the questions sa Q&A. Bakit may leap year? Nasagot ko na kanina. Kailangan po ba namin memorize sa mga examples for the cut? Not really. Ano po yung luster? Luster is the amount of brightness of an, an, an element. Kaya mo ba siyang pakintabi nung hindi? Uh, sir, bakit wala pong graphene sa UPCAT? Uh, it's because it's an advanced element. It's not really taught in high school, not taught in all high school, and it's not an important factor in UPCAT. When you go to engineering, you understand it. Why are most volcanoes in the Philippines strata volcanoes? Does it have to do with the geography? It has everything to do with geography. Kasi we are beside a uh, convergent boundary. So, ang nangyayari, mayroong Marianas Trench, the Philippine Plate and the Pacific Plate produces the Marianas Trench and it produces stratovolcanoes. And finally, are there power plants that doesn't use steam engines? Yes. The power plants that doesn't use steam engines are the coal, uh, sorry, the oil, the diesel power plants. Okay. Coal power plants uses steam. Uh, I think uh, oil power plants also use steam, but there are some uh, diesel and gasoline power plants that don't use steam. They use the internal combustion engine. Okay? So you imagine mo meron kang napakaraming, tra uh, napakaraming makina ng kotse na magkakatabi. Those are the diesel power plants that we use here. But most of the time, and the most efficient engine is still the steam engine. In fact, if you search uh, through Google, uh, search in sa Google, ano? Search the steam-powered cars. Nakakaaliw yung mga sasakyan na yan. Alright? So I'll proceed. Number 13. Stem, gas, fumes. Now let's now uh, return to number 13, the, our class. The blank horizon contains the highest concentration of organic matter. Okay. Marami nang hula, letter A. Kaya ako alam na nang hula kayo kasi A, A question mark ang mga sagot nyo. Okay, this is something that, unfortunately, you need to know. Okay? The answer is letter A. What are those horizons? You have the surface layer, the topsoil, the subsoil, weathered rock, and the bedrock. R is the bedrock. So, tama yung isa. May nagsabi kanina. Okay? Yung iba na isep is the first layer A? No, it's actually O, A, B, C, R. Right? So this is something I don't really need to discuss. The bedrock is the bottom rock. The surface layer, the topsoil, has the most organic matter. E horizon. Let me check dun sa e-horizon. I will verify ko lang, ha? Ah, yeah. The, the illuvial horizon. Yes, it's there. Pero, it's not something 
Parang ito yan eh. When you were taught the alphabet in elementary, you, you just know A, B, C, D, uh, tuloy, tuloy lang. Okay? Highest concentrated contents of organic matter. Bakit A ang sagot? The answer should be O and A. Di ba? But in the choices, there is no O. So the answer for this one is the A horizon. So it's basically the best choice among uh, all the choices. A is the topsoil, B is the subsoil, R is the bedrock, and itong S, it's not even among, amongst the layers. Right? My God, what is that? This is the first time you've heard of it. At least remember na lang to. Most of the time, and based on what I've experienced, uh, what, what we've gathered from the past UPCATS, past entrance tests, they don't really talk about the O, A, B, C, or R. The question would likely be surface layer, topsoil, subsoil, weathered rock, or bedrock. Okay? So, yun ang pangano dito. Tinanong ko lang yung, yung layers na to, but when you encounter it in the UPCAT, it's unlikely to be called O horizon, B horizon, C horizon. It is most likely going to be called topsoil, subsoil, or bedrock. Pag po both nasa choices, the answer would be O or A, and that would be a terrible type of question. Okay. Number 14. Okay, I'm going to stop A mineral scratches all other minerals. What is its MOS scale rating? Madali na yan, di ba? This is something I don't need to discuss. Alam nyo na lahat, na-discuss ko ng karina. Number 10. Since MOS scale is only 1 to 10, pag nasa 10 ka na, you can scratch every other mineral. And yes, it's the diamond. It's pinakataas. Okay, number 15. Which of the following is not a type of physical weathering? So you have two terms. You have physical weathering and you have chemical weathering. So among the choices, which one is not a type of physical weathering? Okay, you're correct. The answer here is carbonation. So, what is carbonation? Carbonation is actually the largest form or the most abundant form of chemical weathering. Ano nangyayari sa kanya? Carbonation, carbonic acid dissolves calcium, carbonate, and rocks. How do you form carbonic acid? Carbonic acid is acid rain. So carbon dioxide in the air mixes with rain to form carbonic acid. So it's a very uh, it's a very light acid. In fact, every time you go out in the rain, pinapatahan ka na ng acid rain. But it doesn't really hurt you because it's a very weak acid, but it's massive. So, kung ang sample nito is this. This is an effect of carbonation. So, meron kang calcium carbonate layers that, and because of the rain, natutunaw niya yung calcium carbonate. It doesn't happen in a single rain. It happens in hundreds of years of rain. Masisira niya eventually yung rock. Okay? 
So acid rain is because of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So this is carbonation, this is chemical weathering. The other two forms, in physical weathering naman is exfoliation. How does it work? You have a rock, and I think may nakikita kayong gato minsan sa lugar nyo. It heats up in the morning and cools in the evening. Eventually, expansion, shrinking, expansion, shrinking, eventually madudurog yun na sa labas. And you will have a smaller rock. It's not as obvious here in the tropics, but it's very obvious in places na uh, malamig sa temperate. Very hot in the morning, very cold in the evening. So this is exfoliation. So layer by layer, nawawala, natatanggal yung part ng layer na rock na yon, so the rock becomes smaller. The other common physical weathering is frost wedging. You have water, umulan, and then at in the evening, it freezes. So at the top uh, layer, the top freezes first, expands, it can force a rock to break. Kaya ito yung reason kung bakit kung naglalaro kayo ng Pokemon, rock-type Pokemons are vulnerable to water. Wala bang audio? I, I, I think I'm still here. Okay. Got it? So, ano po ang exfoliation? Exfoliation is, pakita ko dito, the outer layers of the rock slowly but surely is destroyed. So, meron kang original rock, expansion, shrinking, expansion, shrinking, expansion, shrinking. Eventually, uh, sisira na siya. Kaya diba, Si, kung naglaro kayo ng original na Pokemon, si Squirtle ang panglaban dun sa Onyx ni Brock. Wedging. This is wedging naman. Nakatapat dito. If you notice this, magpapasukan ng tubig. Uh, simply by rain. Okay? So you have water here. And then, when the night uh, approaches, the top freezes. And diba ice is bigger. Ice is, uh, ice expands. So magi expand sa ibabaw. It doesn't happen overnight na pag nilagay mo, mag-wedge ka agad siya. What will happen here is, it happens slowly. Uh, tonight, maglagay ng konti tubig, mag-expand. Okay? Tomorrow night, paulit-ulit siya. So do that again every day for 10 years and you are able to break a boulder. Hindi ako pro, pero yung old Pokemon, ang pinakamagandang Pokemon to start with is Bulbasaur. Yung ngayon, hindi na ako I, I haven't played Pokemon since Pokemon Red. So that's a long time ago. Number 16. So, weathering and erosion leads to formation of what? Mahirap mag-shout out. Hindi ko na kayo makita. <laughs> yes, this is actually very simple. Weathering and erosion leads to sedimentary rock. Okay? But, what is the, the biggest advantage of weathering? Doon sa nagsabi ng load, for our jump start series, wala muna tayong game. Okay, wala mo na load dito. This is just a jump start. But starting on our premium uh, session, starting on June 1, may mga games tayo ipapasok. Okay? So for now, lesson muna tayo kasi we will open this to the public. Biscuit lang, ano lang, pita. Okay? So weathering and erosion leads to sedimentary rock. This is very simple. But the biggest advantage of weathering and erosion is that it produces soil. Okay? Without weathering, without erosion, all we will have is rocks. So, magkakaroon tayo ng, uh, with weathering and erosion, we are able to produce soil. Alright? So, simply lang to. 
So weathering, breakdown of materials, can be physical, can be chemical, erosion, transport of sediments. And because of that, sedimentary rocks are formed by sediments and you produce sedimentary rocks. That's it. Number 17. The type of geological stress that occurs in the San Andreas Fault is what? And explain na yan kanina. Huwag hindi ko na ipapalik. Sobrang simple naman yung slide na yun. It's just a sedimentary rock. But this one is shear. Shear, tension, slip. The answer is shear. What does shear force mean? If you rub your hands back and forth, papakita ko sa... If you rub, it, you rub your hands, di ba? There's friction. Try rubbing your hands right now. Umiinit siya, there's friction. Those are shear forces. The San Andreas Fault is an example of shear forces. Okay? And this is the San Andreas Fault Line. When there's earthquake, they simply slide back and forth together. They don't push together, hindi siya compression, hindi siya divergent. They just slide side to side. Okay? But, pero bakit nagka-earthquake? Kasi imagine nyo yung kamay nyo. When you rub it, it's, uh, it produces heat, di ba? If you rub it softly. But if you try to push it together and try to rub it, mas mainit. Okay? And that's the point of the San Andreas Fault Line. The reason why there's always earthquakes here is because it moves from side to side. Pag slip po, walang friction. May friction siya. There will always be friction there. Okay? So transform boundaries, rocks are subjected to shear you have transform or strike slip fault earthquakes. There will always be friction kasi magkadikit siya. Okay? So, if you have your computers right now, take a screenshot of this one. This is just a uh, comparison. But, divergent tension, convergent compression, transform, you have shear. Divergent, you get normal faults. Convergent, you have reverse faults. And transform, you have uh, strike-slip faults. And if you look at this, convergent faults have volcanic activity along with divergent faults. I discussed this kanina, pero inuulit ko lang for this discussion. Hindi importante kung tagasaan kayo ngayon. Para pareho tayo yung hindi makakalabas ng bahay until August. Ayos ba? Di ba may reverse faults then? Yes. These are convergent plates produces reverse faults. Alright? Nakakuha nyo pa ba? O nagpapakilala kayo kung tagasaan kayo talaga? Diba? It doesn't matter where in the world you are. Because right now, ang kaya mo lang puntahan ay mula sa pintuan ng bahay nyo hanggang kwarto nyo. How sad. Let's proceed. Number 18. What law or principle best explains why deformed or bent rock layers exist? under undeformed ones. <laughs> Sorry. What law or principle best explains why deformed layers are uh, exist under undeformed ones? Answer? Cross-cutting, original horizontality, or superposition? Thank you. 
actually malilit na uh, it's very confusing is it original horizontality or superposition so it, it could be either b or c diba kasi deformed layers or bent rock layers is caused by original horizontality however ang question dito is why is it under undeformed ones it's because of superposition i sorry original horizontality nga. okay principle of original horizontality Sedimentary layers are always horizontal. If they are folded, it means they moved. May papakita ko example dito. Okay? So a younger rock is originally horizontal. An older rock is bent. Nag Nagpo-fold na siya. It's because of immense pressure na nagkakaroon siya ng folding. We'll go back on this at a later item, I think item number 22. And that's one of my favorite items here in the general science review. Number 19, the hardening of lava on the Earth's surface leads to what? Are you there? Audible pa ako? Panawawala ako? Good. Okay, look at this. Metamor uh, as long as it comes from lava or magma, it will always be igneous. The question now, is it plutonic or volcanic? As I mentioned earlier, plutonic means it is under the uh, surface of the Earth. Volcanic means it's above the surface of the Earth. So hardening of lava is volcanic igneous. Or letter D. Okay? So, dalawa lang ang, ang English natin. It's plutonic or, or volcanic. Plutonic is under, uh, under, the, under the surface of the earth. And volcanic is when the volcanoes erupt. It's above the surface of the earth. Okay? When formed underground, it's called platonic or intrusive. When formed above ground, it's called uh, volcanic. Now, favorite item. This is one of my favorite items, number 20. And you've seen this on your workbooks. This one. If you refer to this image, several questions can be asked here. Okay? But let's look at some things. The question muna, let's just sim simply answer the question and let's go back to this diagram, okay? The question here is, which of the following statement best illustrates the law of superposition? Superposition means one on top of the other. So D is N, C is older than N, E is H, G is uh, younger than K. Tignan natin kung nasa ng C tsaka N. C, this is layer C, and N. This is not superposition. This is the law of intrusion. Next, D is older than N. Where is D? This is D. Diba? D is older than N. Again, this is intrusion. E is younger than H. Where is E? This is E. And the H is the fault line. Yes. E is younger than H. This is continuity. The law of continuity naman. We discuss cases yan. And letter D. G is younger than K. Where is G? G is younger than K. This is the law of superposition. So the answer here is letter D. So isa isa in kulit yung laws. The law of superposition is in an undeformed rock, each layer is older than the one above it. So, lagi kang may pumapatong. Okay? That is superposition. So, for example, meron kang rock layer na gato, oldest, then papatong na papatong, you'll have the youngest. This is the law of superposition. So, meaning, in the diagram, the youngest of them all is C, kasi ito intrusion, pero B, 
uh, sa superposition, B is younger than G is younger than K. Okay? Ito yung mga laws ng rock formation. First, superposition. The younger layer is on top of the older layer. Next, original horizontality. After forming layers, habang mas horizontal siya, it's younger. When it deforms, when it deforms, it's actually older. Okay? Cross-cutting or intrusion. Because magma is hot, it can melt through rock. When this happens, intrusion C is the youngest. Okay? So, dahil sa intrusion, makikita mo, napapasok siya above the rocks. It's younger. The next, law of lateral continuity. Tuloy-tuloy dapat siya unless something happens, either intrusion or an earthquake. So if you look at the diagram again, original horizontality is younger. When it folds, it's supposed to continue ng tuloy-tuloy. For example, layer E, itong layer na to, naputol siya. Diba? Because there's a fault line here. It's because of this fault line, ito ngayon yung law of lateral continuity. Nakita mo itong uh, layer J, di ba? Tuloy-tuloy dapat siya, but because of this fault, nagbago. Ano naman yung intrusion? If you look here, N is young, but eventually it dried up. And then nag-intrude ulit ito C. C is the youngest. So if you look at this layer, which one is the youngest rock layer? Kahit isa lang. Kahit yung natanong. Which one is the youngest rock layer in this entire diagram? Ang napulit mas older? Younger ang mag intrude So the youngest will always be the one to intrude. So for this example, the youngest layer is letter C. This layer C, it intruded to above all of them. Bakit younger ang C kaysa sa B? Kasi look, meron ka original horizontality dito, pero nag-intrude pa rin ang C. C is the youngest. The second youngest would be B. The third youngest ang N. Okay? So, of all the law, uh, of all this item, ang pinaka-importante sa inyo dito is this image. That's why I'm, I'll, I'll keep it there for a few more seconds. If you want to, know, search the language, Stanislaw's Law, but this image says it all. Superposition, original horizontality, cross-cutting or intrusion, and then lateral continuity. Sir, yung I, alin ba I dito? Where is I? I, okay. I is an, is an old intrusion. Magandang question mo actually, Mark. I is an intrusion of the old layer. Pero, it stopped. Makita mo, tumigil siya dito, and then layer O is actually younger than, uh, than layer I. Okay? So, patong lang ng patong. Younger ng younger laging in, uh, superposition. However, an intrusion is usually younger. So, if I ask you, which one is younger, G or N, Makikita niya dito, na-intrude ng N ang G, meaning N is younger than G. But look at this, N did, did not intrude B. So meaning, nag-superposition ng B after na intrusion ng N. Okay? Alright, wala nang nagtatype. So hindi ko, I'm not really sure if you're still here. Are you all still here? Uh, type naman ng, ng number three. Yeah, okay. I was worried. Nakala ko na wala ako. Thank you very much. At least narinig nyo na. Next, number 21. We're, we'll finish exactly on time. Uh, we'll finish a bit earlier than four. Pero ma, I can answer a lot of your questions. Trilobites are good index fossils for the blank, 
because they have blank geographical distribution. I have like five hundred and three. But now, number twenty-one, trilobites are good index fossils for the blank period because they have blank geographical distribution. Which one is your answer here? Okay. Naklik nyo, naklik ko actually, it's a uh, widespread. So, ano yung sabi na index fossil? Trilobite is something that existed in the Cambrian period. Okay? A good index fossil is this. It's used for assigning age to rock layers. Example are ammonites, trilobites, and corals. Okay? It's also known as guide fossils or indicator fossils or zone fossils. The advantage of uh, indicator fossils or index fossils are used because of its widespread uh, existence. During the Cambrian period, buong mundo meron trilobite. During the Denovan period, buong mundo merong mga ammonites. Okay? And they existed over a relatively short span of geographical time. They existed for less than a million years. So for example, if we all die now, kung kware, itong COVID-19 kills all humans, the future earthlings will explore, uh, will dig up, dig up, and they will see human bones. We are actually pretty good index fossils of our time. Okay? So napakaraming humans sa buong mundo. Trilobites during the Cambrian period, sila rin yung dominant species. During the Denovan period naman, the Ammonites naman ang uh, ang tawag dito, ang pinaka <laughs> Sorry, sorry for the joke. But yes, it's because they were dominant. Oh, kumatok na ako. But basically, ang sabi nga nila ngayon, this is not the the age of humans. Ang ang tamang term daw ngayon is the age of chickens. Do you know that there are five times more chickens than humans in the world? Hindi nga lang yata five eh. Sorry for the joke. So it's not really the age of humans. It's right right now it's the age of chickens. There are more you there are more chickens in the world than there are humans. Okay, so this is this is it. This is how uh, index fossils work. If you notice, rock layer A, wherever in the world, I merong kang trilobites. Okay, and the advantage of trilobites is they don't exist again. After uh, existing for a short period of time, they never re-existed. The other index fossil, if you notice this, letter C, diba? the ammonites, ito yung parang uh, nautilus, these are ammonites, these are also good index fossils. Kasi they also existed wide range except dito sa location 3 and they also existed at a very specific time. If you notice these uh, shells naman, these aren't good uh, index fossils because they existed at a very long range of time. Nakuha? So nautilus, ammonites are nautilus. It's a pretty good index fossil, but trilobites is uh, the best index fossil of the Cambrian period. Okay? Nako, ito yung magulo yatang question. Ah, hindi pa. Simple itong question ito. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. This is more of math than anything else. The ratio of C14 to nitrogen-14 decay is 1 is to 7. How old is the rock? 
if you have carbon-14, and then carbon-14, after 5,730 years, becomes nitrogen. Okay? So if the ratio is 1 is to 7, how old is the rock? Meaning, if you have one whole carbon, magiging kalahati siya after 5,000 years, tas yung matitirang carbon na yun, kalahati ulit after 5,000 years, so how many splits have this uh, has occurred? The answer here is actually not B. It's letter C. What happened? Half-life of radioactive isotope is the time it takes for the isotope to decay. Diba? So nangyong yung half-life. So one, zero half-life is 100%. One half-life is 50%. Two half-life is 25%. Three half lives is 125, 12.5 uh, percent, and so on. So in our example, one is to seven is 12.5 percent, meaning nakatatlong half life na siya. And three half lives means you multiply 5,730 by three, and you get 17,190. So yeah. 1 is to 7, you have 3 half lives. 5, 7, 30 times 3 is 17,109. Next, number 23. Land plants first appeared during the blank period. This is the most difficult item here in, uh, in the Gen Sci question. And this is, I'll give you a clue or a technique for this one. Hindi ko po na-gets. Half-life. Ito lang yun, no? 100%, 50%, 25%, 12.5%, 6.75%, 6 and so on. So, if the half-life is 5, uh, if the percentage is 1 is to 7, you get 12.5%. Uh, 12 12 Therefore, the half-life is 17,190 years. For this one, nasabi ko ito, this is the most difficult one. Okay, I, if you get this wrong, it's okay. And it, in fact, it's unlikely that a question like this would appear. Why? This is a review. So what we're doing here is we're trying to review the eras. And this is an item that will teach you both the eras and the periods. In the UPCAT or college entrance exams, it's likely going to be the era and some periods, some important periods, but not all of it. Because, do not be scared of this next slide. So the answer here is B, but that's not important. This is scary. This image is scary. How can you remember all of this? Here's the, here's the thing. The only thing you need to remember for the upcut is the top four. The Precambrian, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. Nakatakot lang siya, pero it's not really scary. Okay? The question that we gave you, ito, will not appear in the upcut. This is a question to test you. But this question, Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic, yun lang kailangan nyo maalala. Okay? But except for some key points. How does it work? The Precambrian period is the, the age of the bacteria. The Paleozoic era is the age of the mollusks. Ito yung napakaraming nag-exist na underwater creatures, Paleozoic. Mesozoic is the age of the dinosaurs. And Xenozoic is the age of the mammals. So ito lang apat na tanan nyo. Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Xenozoic. Okay? I'll go one by one. So primitive bacteria ang, pre, ang Precambrian. That was around uh, 3 billion years ago. Paleozoic area naman is the explosion. Dito nag-exist ang Denovian period, Carboniferous period, the Permian period. 
Okay? Ito yung sobrang dami na na nag exist na life. So this is the Cambrian period. I'm going to uh, through this quickly because it's not as important as you need as it appears. Okay, this is the Cambrian period, underwater life. This is the trilobite. Okay? The Ordovician period naman, this is the age of the plant, uh, age of the plants. Meron na tayong fungus. The Silurian period naman is the age of the fish. Okay? I'm ah, sorry. Hindi pa pala. The Devonian period pala ang age of fishes. Okay, okay Magdala. I'm really going through this so fast because it's not as important. The Novian period is the age of fishes. Carboniferous uh, period naman is the age of seed-bearing plants. So mga ferns. Permian period is the first mammals. Pero, what's more important is the Mesozoic era. Ito na ngayon. The Mesozoic era is the age of the dinosaurs. Split into Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So, dinosaurs siya. Okay? Triassic period, ito yung mga uh, diversification. Napakaraming dinosaurs na exist. Jurassic period. And finally, the Cretaceous period. Mass extinction at the end of this period, and the uh, extinction is caused by, alam natin to lahat, the comet, the Chicxulub crater. Okay? Here is something that you need to, uh, you, there's something nice to think about. The Mesozoic era was 300 million years old. Okay? The entire Mesozoic era is 300 million years. With that, on dinosaur time, the age of the dinosaurs ended long ago. But there is less time that separates humans from the Tyrannosaurus rex than the Tyrannosaurus rex from the Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus appeared over 250 million years ago. The Tyrannosaurus rex appeared around 60 to 70 million years ago. So, mas malapit ang human sa Tyrannosaurus rex as compared sa Tyrannosaurus rex at Stegosaurus. Ganon kahaba ang time ng age of the dinosaurs. Okay? Teka lang ha. Kaya yung sinasabi nila na, ano, Jurassic Park was wrong, of course, it's wrong, it's fiction. Pero ang nangyari dyan, uh, around 250 million years ago, the Stegosaurus appeared. And around 60 million years, 60, 70 million years ago, the Tyrannosaurus Rex appeared. Okay, tapos biglang nasira. So, in terms of time, mas, mas relative pa tayo ng Tyrannosaurus Rex. Actually, Tyrannosaurus Rex is a close relative of chickens. Stegosaurus, patay na yung linya niya. Alright? I'll proceed. Malapit na tayo matapos. So, Xenozoic era is the age of mammals naman. Dominance of mammals over and flowering plants. And, kaya ako to binibilisan, it's not as important as the final stage, which is actually the quaternary period. This is the age of man. So, this is the entirety of it. Okay? Hindi na ganun kay importante. Just remember, Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. And that's all you need to remember. Next, number 24. Which class of fuels? This is something, again, you just need to know. Unfortunately, this is something na kailangan na exam. Palo the 50. Which class of fuels for fires includes combustible metals such as magnesium and sodium? A, B, C, or D? Um, if you can guess, okay yan, but it's not as important as um, a lot of you doesn't know. 
But for those who know, then good. The answer is letter D. Galing ah, marami nakatama. So ano itong mga classes na to? Class A is paper, plastic, rubber, or wood. Screen capture niya. This is something, unfortunately, you need to know. Class A combustibles. Class B combustibles are oils and greases. So paper ang A, oil ang B. Class C combustibles are electrical equipment. Yes, a disaster risk in Arnick. It's actually part of your classes now. Class C is electrical equipment. And class D, yung sample natin, is combustible metals. So lithium is a combustible metal. And ang kagandahan ng mga combustible metals is it produces different light. It produces different colors. Okay? And it's actually the combustible metals that produces fireworks. Okay? Okay. Dahan-dahanin ko. I'll give you five seconds per slide. Class A is paper, plastic, rubber, or wood. Ito yung automatic inisip nyo nagkukumbust. This is class A. Class B are gasoline, oils, and greases. It produces fire. So A and B, naisip nyo, it really does produce fire. Class C is electrical equipment. Electrical equipment is actually very combustible. Kaya nga madalas, di ba, pag sa bahay nyo, ay, amoy sunog, nasa nyo, amoy sunog. Ang hinahanap nyo kagad, electrical equipment. Okay? And then class D is something you don't really think about, but class D is combustible uh, metals. In your chemistry class, ginagawa niyan, yan, magtatapat kayo ng metal sa Bunsen burner at magkakaroon siya ng color. It's the combustible metals that produces colors in your uh, in your fireworks. Okay? Bakit amoy sunog nga? Medyo kinababa kayo? May nasusunog na ba dyan sa bahay nyo? Baka kayo lang nasusunog ngayon. Napakainit eh. Okay? So, class D is combust combustible materials. Ano yung class K? Sige nga, ah, uh, Class K. Ah, yeah. Class K fires or combustible materials na Class K is commercial cooking equipment. Uh, cooking oil, animal fat is Class K. Thank you for pointing that out. It's not included in my presentation. So those are things that you just need to remember. Sana all hot. No, napakainit ngayon. Sana all cold. Okay? And finally, number 25, this is in your disaster risk reduction class. This is something you just unfortunately need to know. But basically in the UPCAT, the Republic Act 10121 is the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, NDDRMC. Ano ang mas likely na tanong? What does the letter R in NDRRMC mean? Mali yung ano ko. Mali yung aking ano. NDRRMC to. Da dalawang R. Okay? Hindi dalawang D. NDRRMC. What does the first R mean in NDRRMC? Okay? Yun yung mas likely na question. So the answer here is easy. It's letter D, 10121. And that is very unlikely to be a question in the UPCAT. The UPCAT doesn't ask questions that way. Pero ang mas likely pa itanong sa inyo, what does R risk reduction mean? What does the first letter R in NDRRMC mean? Okay? So with that, at exactly 4 p.m., tapos na ang klasiko. Do you have any questions? All right. So you don't have any more questions. Mukha namang naikidihan nyo to. Congratulations, everyone. This is the second session. Tomorrow, balik tayo sa mathematics. Again, uh, let me remind you. Tomorrow, since math is at 2 p.m., I would recommend you start answering the intermediate algebra exam at around 1 o'clock or 1.30 Para pagkatapos na pagkatapos nyo, 
may discussion tayo. Our teacher tomorrow is uh, Ma'am Elia. She's one of our very good uh, intermediate algebra teacher. So with that, thank you everyone for participating in our class. Medyo nakakatuwa kayo. And I hope to see you again. I'll be your teacher again by Friday, I think, geometry. Uh, I'll handle geometry. Okay. Goodbye to everyone. See you, Sir Ian. Final words? Yes, thank you, Sir Neb. Uh, well, this ends the class. So uh, just remember that you, to answer your uh, reviewer for the designated subject, um, I'll give handouts for those who have not yet downloaded it. Um, you can also download it dun sa ating portal nilagay ko na rin doon so again uh sige see you guys tomorrow for our uh, intermediate algebra class Ayan. bye bye okay bye bye <laughs> bye bye